played on Deion Dawkins, Tyrell Dodson, Gabe Davis, Ty Johnson, and Russell Douglas? Yeah, I don't. I don't have much uh, just because we got back so late. The medical guys are still going through it. Um, but I'll have more for you guys on Wednesday. All right. And when Dion went out, Ryan Vandermark checks in. Obviously, he hasn't spent time in the field much at all, if at all, this season. Fair as well on that final drive. And then you see Dion come out and kind of embrace him. What does it mean to you to help to have help foster kind of a culture that 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 leads to that kind of brotherhood on the field? Yeah, that's um, that's unique and um, really a joy to watch, Alex. It's, you know, whether it's uh, Rasul and Dane and the situation they were going through together, working through together. And then, as you mentioned, Dion and Bandy, um, among others. Right. So it's um, I think that's uh, those that, those are really good threads right there. And finally, the final time out in the fourth quarter called, I believe, with a minute and five seconds. What led to that decision to take the time out so early in the fourth? Uh, give me which one you're talking about. Our final timeout? Yeah, your final timeout. I'm sorry, in, in the second quarter leading, uh, leading up to that uh, throw from Josh that was complete to Ty Johnson and time ran out. I, and so you got yeah and, and I apologize end of the first half final timeout end of the first half you call it with a minute five seconds uh, yeah. rather than waiting a, until a little bit later in that half yeah so the 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 uh, the approach there was we were going into a third down situation wanted to make sure we had the right call uh, give because that was a critical third down to put us potentially in scoring position there so want to make sure we had a, had a good call there and then felt comfortable pretty much the rest of the way with without having a timeout. Would we love to have had a timeout? Yes. Um, but if you don't get that that first down converted there, then it's a different story. So um, wanted to have our best call right there. All right. Sorry for the mix up. Thanks for your time. Yeah, sure. Coach Mookie Arkins, Wellful Sports 1080. Congratulations. Thanks, Mookie. Appreciate that. That's quite the outfit you're sporting there, man. Yeah, it's Victory Monday, so I guess I'll, you know, I'll be in, 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 in fit today. But nevertheless, Coach, man, you know, Alex said it, how Vandermark just went out and stepped up. But just to talk about the quality that I mean, first Brad Hardy uh, Spectre was out there. Like, you didn't even miss a beat. Who would have thought that, you know, you still probably would have thought Dawson was out there the way that he was played in Dane Jackson. That, that PPU was huge at the right time. So just to talk about, you know, the quality depth and how they were able to, you know, make some plays out there for you. Yeah, that's big. And and I mentioned this after the game, Mookie, with those guys being ready to go and um, taking ownership of that responsibility for themselves and coaches having them ready to go. And, uh, and that just goes back to the process during the week of these guys paying attention, even though they're not the primary starter, um, they know. Uh, all it takes is one snap, and they're in there, and they're going to be expected to execute. And, uh, and those guys did a phenomenal job of, of just that. Absolutely, Coach. And after the game, you know, everybody in the whole Bills Mafia world caught your interview with Sal. And, you know, you definitely did show some emotion, and it's well-deserved, though. But you experienced a lot this season, Coach. Dual roles as a head coach and defensive coordinator. Team faced a, a boatload of injuries. You faced coaching change. And, you know, obviously it was a personal attack on your career. Yet, you still arise above that occasion, put your team in position to win a fourth straight division title, Coach. So how does one's faith really express the gratitude of being in that place? Yeah, listen, that's, um, that's, what, the job, that's what the job requires, right? Um, it, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a good, it's a, you know, a challenging job, and I'm, I'm fortunate that I've got good people around me and um, led by my faith in, in, in the good Lord above. And, I know that he's walking, he's walking right beside me every step of the way. So, which I need because um, it's not an easy undertaking, that's for sure. We'll be coaching. We got what, Wilma Mary Bowl, part four, part three, human time on life. <laughs> uh, again, this matchup is for all the marbles. What's it going to be like matching up with your former teammate one more time? Well, I've got the utmost respect for, for Coach Tomlin, and uh, we go way back, and uh, we've got now three including myself, uh, Wim and Mary alums on our staff, and I believe he is two. And then Danny Smith, I believe his special teams coach, um, worked there as well. So, um, you know, it, it runs deep, and uh, we've played each other before. I'm sure we'll play each other again. Um, but just 
happy for the school, happy for the recognition it's going to get. Coach, once again, congratulations. Good luck with you. Thank you. Hey, Sean, John Worrell. Hey, John. What other challenges are facing a Mike Tomlin coach team? Uh, well, they're they're extremely resilient. Um, you know, uh, I think I think just he he puts a lot on his leadership group. It appears uh, from the outside, at least, and he's had he has some veteran players on on this team and uh, talented veteran players, and and so um, I think that's really what what you see when you when you watch his teams play over the years. And 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 how impressive is it? Like the, he's never had a losing record. Um, in the NFL, I mean, do you marvel at that at, at that statistic, and what do you make of it? I do. Um, you know, he's one of the best coaches um, in the league, and I believe that. And he's been at this for a long time. Um, you know, won a Super Bowl, and um, and to your point, that he's been able to sustain success over over a number of years. Last thing, um, maybe we've got it all wrong because we've all focused on the deficiencies of the Bills. Um, turnovers and 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 injuries and 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 everything else. Maybe we've got it all wrong because this team seems to have not that you want them, but this team seems to have embraced them in some ways and 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 overcome and, and by and, and overcome them. Do you, do you, I'm not sure if there's a question there, but but do you get a sense of that? Well, I think that the, the that we have a resilient group of, of players um, and a team overall and. I think, you know, it got to a certain point in the year where it's just like, hey, this is the way it's going to be. So um, time to buck up and and uh, and get the job done. And I think that's really what the guys have done. They've um, come together and and, uh, and played for one another, and that has formed uh, an identity um, throughout the last four or five weeks here. Thanks, Sean. Sure. Hey, Sean, my, my question was kind of a long those lines but we talk at various points of the year about how each team is different it's a different story each season uh presents different adversity and that and that kind of a thing uh, along the lines of the answer you just gave to john there um has this group is it maybe uniquely how, how uniquely qualified is it to head now into the postseason given what they've overcome and the identity that they have formed in your opinion yeah, you know, we've gotten here um, because of those qualities. I think that's that they're, they've had a, a large um, or a significant hand in us getting to where we are. There's more work to be done and there's more uh, improvements to be had by our, by our team. Um, so that's that's that that's uh, that comes with great responsibility as well as we move forward into the first week of the postseason here. And um, that focus and, and that intentionality is what has to has to come to the surface here as we move forward here. But yeah, I mean, I, I don't, uh, I don't ignore that or, or overlook that. That the way the guys have come together and uh, been resilient through some of the challenges that we've had, I think it, it says a lot about who they are and, and um, how important things are to them. Yeah, does that just kind of manifest itself as like maybe a confidence that you would have at halftime last night after the first half, the way things went, that that the players in your room know they've overcome it before. And maybe that's part of the what John meant by embrace that using yeah. that part of that situation. Yes, I would agree. Uh, you know, when you're when you're in a situation that that you've been in before and, a, and you've been able to overcome it, um, I think that that is part of learning how to win, and it's also part of figuring things out and finding a way. And, and our guys have done that uh, numerous times now. I don't love being able, you know, having to do that. <laughs> um, uh, it just seems like it's never easy. Uh, but that is uh, such as life in the NFL. Thank you, Sean. Sure. Hey, Sean. Um, just after, just before the bye week, you talked about uh, wanting to dig deep to find out what was going wrong in some of the end of game scenarios um, that played you guys, you know, in the middle part of the season. Now, having you know gotten stops on three of the last five games in the last two minutes, what do you think? Has been the biggest difference. What did you find in, in some of your studies at that time? Well, I you know I believe it's uh, it's never just one area, but we were able to uncover some things. Uh, I think our players were able to build some awareness on maybe what we can do better from an execution standpoint, and and then we've been able to work together on um, having a having a mindset when we take the field of 
uh, of confidence, but also uh, what needs to get done and how soon it needs to get done in order to give us the best chance to win. I'm sure it's not easy in a situation like that with the game on the line, but how have you kind of found the sweet spot between being maybe overly aggressive or too soft? Yeah, that is a, that's a tough balance uh, because you, you don't want to take too much risk, but you also don't want to not be aggressive enough to your point. So it's, um, hey, listen, if we knew the exact play that they were going to run, then I'd be able to tell you exactly how aggressive we should be. But unfortunately, they, they don't tell us that. Um, but I've been extremely proud of how the guys have finished these games, uh, in particular over the last uh, month, month and a half here. And then this is, a, this is the fourth year in a row you're entering the playoffs with at least a four-game win streak. <clears throat> is there anything applicable from the last three years in the playoffs that you can maybe apply here to ensure maybe a, a deeper playoff run? Well, continue to take it one, one game at a time. Uh, I think that's big. I think it's, uh, you know, we've got a, a good football team coming in here who is very resilient, uh, very well coached. They have a talented roster and, um, you know, this is going to be a good football game. And, and we've got to prepare for that. Um, so we've all the respect in the world for them. And, um, you know, they handled us rather easily in the preseason, to be honest with you. So, um, you know, we've got some work to do here. Thank you. Hey, sir, uh, you made the decision in the fourth quarter to challenge the, the Tyreek Hill catch. I was just wondering what you saw on that play in that split second to, to go ahead with the challenge and then how beneficial was that to that set up, you know, the punt and then Harden's return for the touchdown. Yeah, no, I appreciate you asking that. No, that was a, that was a great challenge. You know, I've got, I got a couple guys upstairs and, and, uh, and Mark Lubick and, and Jerry Bergman and, and uh, Dennis Locke do a great job giving me some information there. And, you know, sometimes we get a, we get a uh, replay on the video board. Other times we don't, and they see it on TV uh, with the TV feed upstairs in the booth. So um, that was great communication on their part. And, and uh, we were able to win that one, which ended up being a pivotal um, uh, moment in the game right there. And then you had two fourth down calls to go for it on the final offensive drive, the one that you picked up and the one you know, that you know, didn't convert, but just what was, your, what was your trust level like in the offense in that moment to pick up in those spots? Yeah, they're all different, right? Every situation's uh, a little bit different from another, but felt felt like we wanted to be aggressive there. There's certainly a high, high-powered high offense, and uh, although our defense was playing uh, extremely well in the second half there, uh, not giving up any points. I felt like still that we wanted to to be aggressive and try and end it on offense, and and uh, we you know we were one for two there and came within a whisker of being two for two. Hey Sean, um, I know you went or didn't have major injury updates, but I was curious when we talked to Rasul after the game, he was saying how he felt he maybe could have gone back in, but then ended up talking to Dane Jackson, and it was ultimately. Dane's kind of confidence of like, I'm 100, I can do this. Um, that led to him going in. I was wondering just kind of, you know, when that conversation gets to you, like, are you talking to these guys too? Or like, how did that kind of play out for you with Rasul and Dane specifically? No, the, the way that that unfolds on the sideline, Catherine, is uh, normally Nate or, or one of Nate's assistants will come to me and say, hey, this is the status, status of said player and uh, they're either going back in or we're working on them or they're not going to be able to return and uh in a situation situation with rasul it got to a point of uh, he's going to be out for the game so that conversation that that you're referring to that unfolded with dane and and rasul there you know i was not privy privy to that conversation um uh, my my uh my attention was elsewhere at the time gotcha no that makes sense i was just curious um, what did you make? I know you've talked just kind of about guys in general, but Dane, um, just his season as a whole, what have you seen out of him in kind of this continuous, you know, what we saw last night? Yeah, I mean, he's one of the main um, proponents that I, that I would say is a great example of uh, continuous improvement, right? He, he continues to, to be unselfish. He continues to put the team first. Uh, no matter what his role has been or, or, or what's asked of him, uh, he keeps his he keeps a positive mindset uh, regardless. And 
he's just all about um, trying to be the best player he can be and the best person, quite frankly, he can be. And I have a tremendous amount of respect for that. Um, and then just on the punt return touchdown um, for Deontay Hardy, I know you've talked about kind of his resiliency as well, but what else stood out to you on that play? You know, there were some key blocks, stuff like that. Just when you look at that entire special teams unit, um, what were kind of your takeaways from that? Very impressed. I really was. Um, you know, the, when you look at the blocks on that play, um, the execution level was very high. And then the way that the, the players finished the play, um, and once you get Deontay going, he, you know, he can do the rest. And as, as everyone saw, but to me, it was the, the mindset, the attitude, the urgency, the intensity uh, of each man doing their job to, to, to get him started there. Thanks. Coach, this is Pat Freeman from the Buffalo Criterion. How are you doing today? I'm well, Pat. How are you? I'm great. It's my birthday, so. All right, man. Happy birthday. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I wanted to congratulate you on the game yesterday and also ask you, um, during the course of a long season, and you've gone to 17 games now, how has that affected your coaching during the course of that season, especially during your tenure here? because these guys are now susceptible uh, to a lot more injury and a lot more game time. Well, that's an interesting question, uh, Pat. I think more than anything, you know, we're called as coaches now with, with this um, duration of, of 17 games each season to really dive into the, to the science of making sure we're doing right by their bodies and their minds and their spirits and, um, and number first and foremost, their safety, right? So, um, it's, uh, it's, it's to me incumbent upon us that we, um, do everything we can to do the research we need to put them in the best position possible to stay safe, A, and then also B, perform at the highest level possible each week. And coming into, uh, this game against, uh, the Pittsburgh Steelers, are you anticipating uh, any other players coming back from injury? Is Jordan Phillips going to be available at all? I don't know that right now. Uh, again, I'll get an update uh, from Nate here soon and uh, hopefully have more information for you on Wednesday. All right. Thank you, sir. Have a good week. All right. Thanks. You too. And happy birthday. Thank you, sir. Hey, Sean. Um, I was curious, what went into the decision to have Vaughn active yesterday, and why did you feel comfortable having him up over Kingsley? Yeah, again, just similar to the week before, it felt like he, he gave us the best chance to win and thought he had had a, uh, he had approached, he had approached the week, excuse me, um, with a very urgent uh, mindset and approach, and, and I saw some of that show up in the game. Uh, we had limited rush opportunities, but overall, I thought uh, he showed some flashes there. Was there anything specific you saw from him during the week that made you, you know, the urgency you referenced that made you feel like, okay, good to have him up again or just kind of everything he did? Just everything he did. It starts with his mindset and like it does for most of us. And, and I thought that that was, you know, in a good spot. And uh, he was attacking the week with, uh, with energy and, and urgency, like I said. And then having Leonard up over Latavius, just how, how did you feel about his role yesterday and what he brought in, especially in third and short situations and that sort of thing? Yeah, no, uh, both good players. Uh, we we, uh, we need both of them. And, and Tay was a true pro in how he handled it, very unselfish in his approach. And uh, that is very much appreciated, I think, because I think those are the unselfishness of a team is sometimes linked to how successful a team may become. And, and I think that's that's important there. And, and then. I thought I thought Lane did some good things. Um, you know, he was in there in some of the uh, the drop back passing game as well from a protection standpoint. And so we're, he's always learning. We're always learning and trying to improve. Thanks. Sure. Good afternoon, uh, Coach Sean McDermott, George Redney, Challenger Community News. Good afternoon to you. Good afternoon, George. How are you? Good. Good. Hope all is well with you with yourself as well. Thank you. It is. And, and my first question is, uh, how big a play was that where Dane Jackson actually took the penalty where it looks like Tar Tariq Hill was going to beat him on a slant uh, pattern, and uh, he took the he ended up getting called for a penalty on it. 
And then the very, and then the very next play, you had the uh, interception uh, by Taylor Rapp on the very next play. How how, how big a play was that? Was that penalty by uh, Dane Jackson? As it turned out, yeah, I, I believe it was two plays later. But but you're right. It, you know that was a that was a situation where we we didn't do a great job communicating. We were a little bit out of out of line there with our with our uh, alignment and technique and. Um, not Dane's fault. It's it's more than anything communication uh, coming from the sideline from me into the, into the uh, guys and getting the call. So things were going a little bit fast there, and, and so um, you know obviously that got called and don't want to call, but it's better than getting beat, you know, for a touchdown. Exactly. So, um, smart play by Dane. Yeah, whenever there's a chance to get take a what you would call a good penalty, that that seems surely the case. Uh, and, and my last question for you, it seems like Josh Allen seems to be really hyped up for every game, every week it seems to be. And it seems like once he gets hit a couple of times, he tends to, he seems to settle down and then gets into a groove. Is there any way maybe to help him with getting him to be a little more relaxed once that, uh, when, when the game first starts, especially in that first quarter, first quarter of games? Yeah, I mean, I think, well, I think I'll just hit him in the locker room a couple of times and get him, get him lathered up a little bit, right? Yeah, exactly. Or some, <laughs> or some. I was thinking maybe some yoga or something, something that so, yeah. relax him a little bit. Yeah, you, you, you send your ideas in, and uh, we'll try everything, right, to get him to get him uh, settled down there, though. But he's a, he's a heck of a competitor, and I think everyone saw that last night, in particular in the back, back half of that game. Absolutely. Hey, thanks for your time, and good luck this coming weekend, Coach. All right, thank you, George. Appreciate it. Hey, Coach, thank you for taking the time to chat with us. Um, I just wanted to go back towards the end of the game. You did a, an interview, I think, with Sal on the radio after the game, and he had you turn to Bill's Mafia up in the stands, and it kind of sounded like in that moment maybe, you know, little emotions were getting to you. Uh, I was just asking if you could take us through kind of what went into that, why maybe uh, you got caught up in your emotions a little bit and just, you know, having them in that away game atmosphere and why that was so significant in that moment. No, I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, I was not. I was not emotional. Um, <laughs> no, I mean, listen. It was. Uh, it was a great win. Great win for our organization. Great win for our fans, both uh, those that were there and those that weren't. But to to turn around. I mean, you don't. As a coach, you're so in the moment. We're fighting. You know, every play to try and get the result we're looking for, and then you don't realize the amount of people that are there there to support support our team and support you and I mean, I think it's just, you know, it's just to me symbolizes how special Bill's Mafia is and, and the lengths that they go to support their team that they're so passionate about. And this place is unique because of that. You know, from the moment you got here and, you know, breaking the drought to, you know, what you guys have accomplished with four AFC East titles now, the shift the organization has made with that, you know, does the, I guess, just the, the way that, you know, the players have responded to this fan base and everything like that. Is that, does that ever get old? Kind of no. think I know the answer to that one, but. No way. No, no way. I mean, this is, um, like I said, a, as passionate of a fan base as I've ever been around. And to me, that, that really exists in the NFL. Um, and I think it's really special when you have an owner um, that is from, that is from the area, you know, can be in the same and, like it, there's just a there's just a, a genuine connection, right? That um, it starts from the top down, and, and the people that work in our building, um, true Buffalonians, many of whom are born and raised here and, and have stayed here, and uh, it's just uh, it doesn't happen that way everywhere, right? And uh, and I think that when you have that, it just it just runs deep, and, and the and the and the emotions run deep, and the passion for the team. Um, Listen, it's no different than for the Sabres, right? And, and I think that that's, that's part of what makes it so special. Thanks, Sean. Sure. Hey, Coach, I know when you guys set out and make those goals in the beginning of the season, one of the goals is hosting home playoff games, and you get to do that here on Sunday afternoon. You guys are 4-1 and one at home in the playoffs since 2018. So why is playing at home so important in the postseason? Well, our fan base, Maddie, I think that's that's a number one, right? Playing in Western New York, uh, who knows what the weather will be like. Um, we'll see uh, how it turns out this Sunday at one. Um, but to play in front of our fans, it's it's tough to play here. 
excuse me, and going on the road is tough. I can tell you in the playoffs, it's um, when you're trying to run a play on offense and you can't hear, um, you can't communicate and, and get everybody on the same page. That's a that's a daunting task right there on the road. So it, it's nice to to have that at home. Um, you know, that said, we've got to make sure that we execute and we're, we are ready to go um, in terms of our level of play this weekend. I know you spoke about Terry and Kim a little bit in that last answer there, but four straight AFC East titles, a lot of it uh, isn't, wouldn't happen without them being at the helm and being at the top of all of this. So what can you say about just how important they are to this team and, and this place? Well, it all starts with them um, and, and what they've gone through um, and how they've handled it to me, again, says a lot about, uh, Western New York, it says a lot about the Bills organization um, in terms of uh, just the, the tight-knit community that we have here in Western New York and inside the Bills uh, uh, building here. So um, it's really built on love and, and um, you know, I just can't be more, I uh, couldn't be more honored to work here, uh, whether I was a head coach or any other role here. It, it's just, uh, to me, it's a, it's a great honor to work here an organization that cares so much about the people. Thanks, Coach. Sure. That's all the questions for today. Thanks, Coach. Sure. Thanks, Kaylee.